Good evening, good morning, and good day. And thank you so much for once again choosing to spend a little bit of your time with me. In the news today, we're going to be looking at a incredibly interesting video. Um, but before we watch that video, we need to have a look at the man delivering the speech in the video. So we're going to be watching a talk from 2014 by Robert A. Stern, PhD, Professor of Neurology, Neurosurgery, and Anatomy and Neurobiology. Okay. He's educated uh, in psychology, BA, uh, psychology masters, psychology, neuropsychology, clinical neuropsychology specialization, PhD, pre-doctoral internship in neuropsychology, um, Department of Veterans Affairs Medical Center, Boston, Master's Postdoctoral Fellowship in Neuropsychology, Psycho, Psycho Neuroendocrinology as well. He's got that fucking baller fucking credentials, right? Um, he is... Director of the Clinical Core of the BU Alzheimer's Disease Center, one of only 30 centers funded by the National Institute of Health, the NIH. One of only 30 centers funded by the NIH in America, motherfuckers. He is Director of Clinical Research for the BU Chronic Traumatic and the CTE Center. You know... A major focus of his research involves the long-term effects of repetitive brain trauma in athletes, including the neurodegenerative disease CTE. He has been funded from NIH and the Department of Defense for his work on developing methods of detecting and diagnosing CTE during life, as well as examining potential genetic and other risk factors for this disease. He is the lead principal investigator for the seven-year multi-center diagnostic CTE research project funded by the National Institutes of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. His other major areas of funded research include the assessment and treatment of Alzheimer's disease, the cognitive effects of chemotherapy in the elderly, thyroid brain relationships and driving and dementia. He is the BU site principal. Oh, that's where his knowledge of um, driving thingy that we'll come across in a bit came from. He's the BU site principal investigator for several clinical trials for the prevention and treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Stern has also published on various aspects of cognitive assessment and is the senior author of many widely used neuropsychological tests, including the neuropsychological assessment battery. Dr. Stern has received, so he's written his own psychological fucking tests. He has received several National Institutes of Health and other national grants has published over 250 journal articles, chapters, and abstracts, and is the co-editor of two upcoming books, Sports Neurology, and is part of the Handbook and Clinical Neurology series published by Elsevier, and the Oxford Handbook of Adult Cognitive Disorders, which is part of the Oxford Handbook collection. He is a fellow of both the American Neuropsychiatric Association and the National Academy of Neuropsychology. He is a member of the Mackie White Health and Safety Committee of the NFL Players Association. Oh, he studies... Oh, he, right. So he gets government funding to study NFL players' brains. I bet he doesn't reference himself. He doesn't need to, motherfucker. How? He, oh. Whoa. He is literally working on the most, he studies the brains of the most expensive people in America. The NFL players. There is nobody in America worth more than the NFL players on a sort of individual level where somebody can, like, ignoring the billionaire, trillionaire people, like the NFL players, right? He's paid by the government to study their brain trauma. Who do we think knows more about trauma and brain trauma? This guy or Ono van der Hart, just, just off of these, you know, credentials. <laughs> <laughs> somebody who studies one person that he abuses for 20 years somebody that studies a woman that he abuses for 20 years or the guy that's paid by the american government to study nfl players brains
Oh, yeah. Gangbang Chicken Big Mac is great. Definitely. Oh. He is based McBased. Oh, yeah. Valerie Sinison. Definitely. She's more qualified. Definitely. <laughs> oh. As well. So, member of the Mackie White Health and Safety Committee of the NFL Players Association, as well as the court appointed medical scientific committee for the NCAA student the student athlete concussion injury litigation and his stuff is involved in law Dr. Stern has testified before the U.S. Senate Special Committee on Aging and the U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation. He appears frequently in national and international print and broadcast media for his work on CTE and AD. He also appears in the feature-length documentaries League of Denial, PBS Frontline 2013, Head Games 2012, and I Remember Better When I Paint 2009. He received his then, then we go on where he, that, 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 that's, his, that's his fucking education. And and you know um, his 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 um, his his site. So this is all him. More than two hundred and fifty scholarly articles from this motherfucker. Citate twenty nine thousand six hundred seventy nine citations of his name in other people's work. His name in other people's work. In other people's journals, his name. Since 2017, in other people's journals, his name comes up. You can't see it, sorry. 17,000 times. He has, been, he, has, he has been cited 17,000 times in the last five years. Right? That's not always a good thing. It's not always a good thing. But I know with somebody like Ono van der Hart, his citations are something like two or three hundred. And we know who's citing Ono van der Hart. Ono van der Hart. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest, with these credentials, this man is a baller. A baller. Let's listen to him talk about the DES test and more importantly in some ways, but not necessarily. I agree. I agree, Clary. I agree. I agree. But I mean, also, whenever we look at a Valerie Sinus or a Rono van der Hart, these things also stand out instantly. It is the polar opposite. It is literally like the other side of the coin. This is night. And they had well, this is day and that is night, you know. This is this is hilarious. So this is twenty fourteen, this this speech. Other other like the, the the other stuff that I was just reading to you is more recent. <laughs> but this speech from twenty fourteen just happens to be fascinating, as you will see. <laughs> um and based on his credentials, I imagine his work does probably in part in the DSM, but maybe not. Uh, he's cited in other diagnostic manuals. Again, in, in, instead. Howdy, gang. This paper came about as a result of my inability to understand. What oh, I and by the way, this conference that he's speaking at um, is is being so. He's the opening speaker at a conference that's being put on. And funded by James Randi, the skeptic. This is a skeptics conference uh, hosted by James Randi. As in, I will give you a million dollars if you can show me your power. Colin Ross, laser beams, never happened. The James Randi. And this is, he, this man, this doctor is the opening speaker. Opens the night. Opens the event. Like, he's he is the shit. <laughs> Again, NFL players wouldn't let him study their heads if he wasn't the shit, right? And the government wouldn't pay him to do that unless he knew a little bit of what he's talking about. And this will also show you how shockingly little influence, perhaps, 
the right people have on this world compared to the wrong people. I was reading in a very popular psychological test called the Dissociative Experiences Test. It's a test to screen for multiple personality disorder and a couple other things. Okay. Dissociation started out as uh, hysteria. And again, quick question. So for those with DID in chat, have you done the DES? Uh, and if you have done the DES, do you mind letting me know what you scored? I can happily tell you. I remember um, I, I did it recently, but I've done it in the past. Remember, I did it for my video. Uh, it's up on my channel, the very original, you know, dissociated video where I called up the fucking Pottergate Center and I did the test so I could give them my score. And they said that, yeah, I should talk to them about having a, an appointment, see if I have DID. And with my score of 49, I know for a hundred percent fact, Mr. Remy Acheron would have diagnosed me with DID because the score of 49 is very high. In 1860, Jean-Martin Charcot, who was the most famous uh, neurologist at the time, got interested in a group of people. Yeah, that's just a fact, Harry. That's something I've been saying for ages as well. Gen that, that's just a fact. Gender is just... I mean, the word gender ori originally, like, we, well, that's why we talk about somebody's agenda, because, like, the word gender, like, you, you, you meetings have a gender. Gender once had a different meaning to that which it has now. And and gender is, is far more as a word in line with identity, which is a philosophical construct, not a scientific medical construct, <laughs> you know? And, and separating gender from sex and understanding their difference is, I'd say, the thing that helps most people with understanding things like... Uh, people who are transgender you know people whose symptoms made no sense to him whatsoever they'd be paralyzed in their left arm one day they'd be paralyzed in their right leg the next day 48 so i was a 49 it's a rain shadow according to the es test at least i'm <laughs> but it doesn't matter watch all right i need to stop interrupting this i'm sorry i'm gonna just rewind a bit and let him chat okay because you really just need to listen to him talk not me i'm so sorry started out as uh, hysteria. So that's the main first fact. As he is saying here, dissociation was hysteria. In 1860, Jean-Martin Charcot, who was the most famous uh, neurologist at the time, got interested in a group of people whose symptoms made no sense to him whatsoever. They'd be paralyzed in their left arm one day, they'd be paralyzed in their right leg the next day, they were blind the third day, he was absolutely convinced that this was due to a neurological lesion, uh, but he could never find the lesion. He finally gave up and said, well, this is psychological, but being a brilliant diagnostician, he said that this is symptoms of suggestibility, exaggeration, selective amnesia, and attention-seeking behavior. Skip ahead 90 years to the first diagnostic and Suggestibility, amnesia exaggerated personality does this hysteria from the 1800s sound like did yeah statistical manual of the american psychiatric association it's conversion hysteria and dissociation is mentioned as a symptomatic expression of hysteria in the dsm2 second edition you still have hysterical neurosis, but hysteria is broken up into somatoform and conversion disorders, which are the physical expressions, and the purely psychological expressions, which are called the hysterical neurosis uh, dissociative type. Now, nah, all cats are girls, all dogs are boys. Those of you who you remember your Monty Python will appreciate the Spanish Inquisition as I go through this. In DSM-2, it's an alteration of consciousness and identity. I know, Kaya, and I'm so sorry that literally like the world's leading neurobiologist has to shit all over it. You missed my little intro to who Dr. Robert Stern is, but TLDR, he's better than everyone. Identity. DSM-3, it's identity, memory, and consciousness. DSM-4, it's consciousness, memory, identity, and perception. And in the DSM-5, which came out last spring, it is consciousness, memory, identity, emotion, perception, body representation, motor control, and behavior. One thing should be patently obvious. 
There is no diagnosis which would not fit into that definition of dissociation. That is literally every illness on earth. You could put half of the medical diseases in Western civilization under that diagnosis. Nonetheless, that is what we use. Well, how did that definition get to be? There is no empirical validation for that definition. You have to remember that the DSM is not a scientific document. It is a consensus document. Well, this creates problems for people who want to diagnose multiple personality disorder. And in 1986, a couple of researchers got together and wrote up the dissociative experience scale. So, so you know how I've always said I don't have a problem with any of you who think or know 100% sure you have DID, and I accept that you may most likely 100% do have DID. You do. I get it. But does it mean the person who diagnosed you actually knew what they were talking about? No. It's impossible. Not, not really. If they'd made you do this DES test, do they have any idea what any of it means? No. Somebody like Remy Akron, who uses this test to insta-diagnose somebody, know anything about the people that he is diagnosing? No. 28 questions to help people diagnose MPD, which is now called dissociative. Does that other fucking doctor, Mike Lloyd, who also uses this test as a screening tool to diagnose, actually know if his patients have DID? No. Dissociative identity disorder. Well, I'm reading through this and it's not making sense to me. And so I start reading through it. This questionnaire consists of 28 questions, blah, 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 et cetera. Look at the scale. And something's not adding up in the back of my mind. So I go through and I actually look at it. And all right, there are four sentences. First sentence, 28 questions, 24 hours in your day. You know, second sentence, it says, how often? Active voice. Se third sentence, how active passive voice? Fourth sentence, to what degree this experience described in the question applies to you, which I don't know. How often you have these experiences, how often these experiences happen to you, to what degree the experience described in the question applies to you, what percentage of the time you have the experience, how can you use one number to answer all four of those very different questions. I don't know how to answer. And then you are to circle the number to show what percentage of the time these things are happening. Trying to answer how often something happens on a scale that is measuring how much time something happens is a little bit like asking someone his weight in feet and inches. Well, I got called up the head of the psychology department in our little town. His name is Michael McDonald. Everybody calls him Mac. Hey, Mac, you want to do a little experiment? And we get 58 students together, and we give them the DES, and they zip through the DES. Oh, mate, ref's a fucking wanker. Yes. And the moment they turn in their questionnaire, we give... What an horrible display. Then one more questionnaire with one sentence. How did you answer the DES? How often? To what degree? How many hours? Or you didn't know? Answer. Guys who have done the DES test, I asked this earlier, and none of you answered. Answer. Done the DES test, answer. Which one? Which one did you answer? How did you answer the questions? And as I said before, I'll be honest, not sure. I used the mix of all of them and inferred and because I was not sure how to answer. And nobody is. Peeps that have done this. 33% said they were answering how often. 18 said to what degree. How many hours, one of them, and six admitted they didn't know what they were answering. <laughs> now, this is on a test whose authors state this has good validity and reliability. I mean, this test has taken off like a rocket it is used not only to test for multiple personality disorder or dissociative identity disorder as we know it today, but for mood disorders, psychotic disorders, personality disorders, eating disorders, as well as things like 
irritable bowel syndrome, immune diseases, pelvic inflammatory disease, and there was even one article I read trying to correlate dissociation with belief in Bigfoot and alien abductions. I was stumped. Well, we get these results back. Mac looks at me and he goes, Bob, surely you can't be the first person to see this. And I go, I don't know. So I go through the literature again. These are all published articles in peer-reviewed journals. One group of uh, experts say this is the number of times. One group of experts say this is the amount of times. One group of experts, including so one of our uh, speakers, says it's both. And at least one person says it's neither. These are all peer-reviewed journals. And this is not an inclusive uh, list either. This is just what I fit on the uh, PowerPoint slide. Well, this doesn't even get to questions, so let's look at the questions. There are absorption questions, there are amnesia questions, and there are depersonalization, derealization questions. Well, absorption means how much you're concentrating on something. But absorption is not only not pathological, it was never even a part of the definition of dissociation. The argument goes like this. The more you are concentrating on something like a baseball game, the less you are concentrating on the barking dog outside, and therefore you are dissociating. However, if you get distracted by the barking dog outside, you have shown a disruption in attention, and therefore you are also dissociating. And if you are watching the baseball game and simultaneously distracted by the barking dog, you are also dissociating because you have split your attention. You can't go wrong with a definition like this. Well, there are also 16 amnesia questions. The questions ask you to remember not only what you forgot, but to put it in the form of a percentage. <laughs> and there are depersonalization and derealization questions, which is asking you to quantify your feelings. And it's a little bit like asking you, you know, what, at what percentage do you love your neighbor? I'm, how do you answer that? Well, it occurred to me that this wasn't due to some sort of distortion of psychological principles. This was just plain bad writing. Let me show you this, some of the questions. Some people sometimes find that when they are alone, they talk out loud to themselves. Show the percentage. Do you sometimes never talk to yourself? Do you sometimes always talk to yourself? Or you fall under the bell curve with the rest of us are people who sometimes, sometimes talks to yourself. I have no idea how to answer that, but this is small fry stuff. Try this one. And again, I have literally had comments on my videos saying, oh, did you, I, I was dissociating then. I've had literally had too many conversations with people on Twitter and not even as many as a lot of you arguing with people saying, stop pathologizing day-to-day -day occurrences as illness. It's not needed. Some people are told that they sometimes don't recognize friends or family members. Well, if you're stuck in a room with your Aunt Esmeralda and somebody flicks on the light for 10 times for one second each time, and five of those seconds you recognize that? Aunt Esmeralda and five you don't, and for five of those seconds you recognize Aunt Esmeralda and for five you don't, and you feel this applies to you 50% of the time, and you circle 50%, yeah, you have answered the question, right? Wrong. It's not asking you how often you don't recognize Aunt Esmeralda. It's asking you how often you're told that you don't recognize Aunt Esmeralda. She's still going to be upset no matter what. Well, like I said, this is simply bad writing. So I go to my old Strunk and Whites, and there are the answers primarily in Chapter 2. Use the active voice. Put statements in a positive form. Use uh, specific concrete language, omit needless words, and you avoid the use of qualifiers. Well, so I rewrote the instructions and said, well, how many times a day and how many hours a day do you talk to yourself? And I rewrote about 16 of the questions. In addition, I asked them how often they spend going to school or work, spending eating, and how much time they spend sleeping. But I wanted to know if there was a correlation between what they said they were doing and what they said they were dissociating from doing. Here are the stats. 43 of the 58 finished the uh, questionnaires. The average DES score is 23, which is considered fairly normal for college students and pathological for anybody else. <laughs> you can make of that what you will. The average <laughs> scored really low because you couldn't read the questions on the test. You <laughs> my <migraines. laughs>
average number of hours in a 24-hour day that they spent in these 16, not in the full 28 questions, was 48 hours a day, with dissociation ranges up to 1,700%. Was there a correlation? Apparently not. This might make statisticians happy, but it doesn't give you an idea of what these students actually said. So let me give you some examples. Student number one said uh, he got so involved in watching TV that he was able to uh, tune out things 90% of the time. How many hours do you watch TV? None. <laughs> this was no accident. Well, when I checked the frequency scores, how many times a day do you watch TV? None. Highway hypnosis, driving down the street and not remembering how all are part of the trip. Student number one again, he dissociates 40% of his travel time. How many hours a day do you travel? None. <laughs> Contrast that with student number 16, who remembers everything as part of his trip and spends 10 hours a day traveling to and from Post. school or work, which is the equivalent of traveling like from on the line. Oh, yeah. back every sorry, day. Sorry. Autoprosopagnosia. Sorry, background videos. Like from San Diego to here and back every day. Autoprosopagnosia is one of those $3 words you will never see outside of a spelling bee or a neurology unit. It means the inability to recognize your own face. It is extremely rare. It is extremely debilitating. Nonetheless, 13 of our students in our little town of 5,000 people suffer from this rare malady. One of whom said, he doesn't recognize himself 90% of the time for one hour a day. Contrast that with student number 14 who always recognizes himself but spends six hours a day looking. Yeah, did without trauma slash did from birth, yeah. At himself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Genetic DID. Suggestive of another. Or cultural DID. So endo also includes things like tulpamances and whatever. Psychiatric malady called narcissism. All the students daydream, but two of them said they daydreamed 100% of the time, <laughs> including while taking these tests, which I could certainly believe. Student number 14 said he was able to ignore pain 90% of the time. When asked how many hours he was in pain, he said none. <laughs> well, it's always easier to ignore pain when it's someone else's. And uh, half the students said they were hallucinating. One of whom, however, said that, that he never hallucinated once daily. Absolutely worthy of Alice in Wonderland. Well, what can you say about my little test? Some people sometimes exaggerate, some exaggerate more than others. Some people learn... Give this shit a like and a share. Because this is the reality of what we learn right here from the DES test. He says it's from his test, but nah, let's be real. This is what we learned. This is all we can learn from the DES test. Haven't learned that there's only 100% of anything. Some people haven't learned that there are only 24 hours a day, even when it's written in great big black letters at the top of the page. Some people will say yes to anything. And some people don't know what the hell they're talking about. What can you say about the DES? It's a test whose instructions and questions aren't understood by this stuff. Also, the current variant of the DES is worse. It used to be answered on a scale of 0 to 100%. Nowadays, variants of the DES, the revised version, is normally on a scale of 1 to 7. 1 to 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. 1 being not at all, 7 being... bigly an answer. It's less and less precise every time somebody makes a change to it. Subjects taking it. Oh, did you take a zero to hundred percent? Here in the UK, all well, the variants I've seen are one to seven. Whose answers are recorded on a scale which can't measure them in order to test for a group of disorders which can't be defined, but with good validity and reliability. <laughs> Thank you. Again, this this guy is the person who's actually done done the science funded by the government researching things like dementia and and creating the tests for diagnosing things like dementia without having to use brain scans. He does know about writing tests and like he's the man. So it's a lot more than Ono van der Hart and Bessel van der Kolk and 
Remy Ackroyd. Dr. Stern, thank you for setting the bar rather high for the rest of the speakers. Hey, I just love that this is by the James Randi Foundation as well. These the opening speaker meeting organized by the James Randi Educational Foundation is just huge for me. Like knowing that James Randi himself demolished Colin Ross on American National Tally. God, one day somebody will be like, hey, I actually recorded that episode. I do have that VHS and we will be able to watch that moment. I know it happened. I've just never seen it. But uh, anybody have a question for Dr. Stern? We have time for one or two questions. How did this happen? <laughs> How did this happen? How often is that our question, guys? How did this happen? And I can answer these two, or this person here. I can answer this person's question, actually. It's Ono van der Hart, Vessel van der Kolk. Vessel van der Kolk. Uh, Colin Ross, Valerie Sinison, et al. You know, is that group at all? <laughs> none of whom were leading neurobiologists, like, like none of whom have a tenth of this man's qualifications. Not even a tenth of this man's qualifications. None of whom. People who cite themselves. And he ripped th their creation apart in 2014. And all we have seen since is it grow and grow and grow. This video was only uploaded last year of, the, of this thing. Uh, where's the full? Let's have a look at the full. My name is Ray. So the full thing, yeah, by the James Randi Foundation. My original upload is by the James Randi Foundation from TAM 2014. There we go, August 24th, 2014. Original upload by the fucking James Randi Foundation. Only 3,400 views. I th I'm going to watch this whole thing later and let you know what else there is to watch, to be honest. I'm definitely going to actually watch this whole thing later, though. Or tomorrow, probably. That's awesome. Got to... What emoji, though? I have no idea what that emoji is. <laughs> got to... Got to... Oh, it's a shower. Got a shower. Nice. People, in, they are people who need to be mocked mercilessly. You know, they actually need to be mocked. You know, they should not be uh, uh, given any respect whatsoever. You know, they they deserve none. They deserve only derision and mockery. The Valerie Sinusons, the Colin Rosses, they they deserve no more. Like we have done the work ourselves never take your own life thank you this is five red mac never take your own life thank you rain we have done the work here on this channel reading ono van der hart's theory of structural dissociation and his actual paper before the book and reading parts of his book we know what utter shit it is for ourselves and now we've witnessed a man being paid to speak at a conference by the james randy educational foundation Eight years ago, ripping the DES apart. Absolutely. They literally deserve nothing more than our um, endless mockery, scorn, and derision. And this video that we just saw, I feel is a very powerful piece of ammunition for us. That is legitimacy to so many things that we've been saying here in this community, right? We can say these things. We've speculated these things that he was saying that we've, we've said these things ourselves in this community a hundred times. But none of us, none of us are Dr. Robert Stern. None of us are the director of one of the, of, of, a, of, a, found, of a clinic, one of only 30 clinics built by your fucking American government to study brain trauma in NFL players and dementia given like I'm I'm sorry he it, it's a bit more than the 20,000 quid that Valerie Sinison got to study SRA you know what I mean I feel I feel the money and shit he's getting from the National Institute of Health is one of only 30 buildings built by the National Institute of Health to study the NFL players brain trauma I feel I feel 
Mm. 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 I feel he knows what he's fucking mm. talking about. Do it, mate. You're valid. You're not silly. You're valid. <laughs>